Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing a discovery of a very strange star system that kind of breaks a lot of records and of course creates a few new mysteries. And in this case it's a binary system with three Earth-like planets whose origin right now is extremely difficult to explain. But before we discuss why this star system is so bizarre, let's I guess briefly discuss the history of exoplanet discoveries and what we always thought about them and how we thought they formed. And so since 1990s, when astronomers originally confirmed the existence of planets outside of the solar system, now referred to as exoplanets, as of late 2025, thousands and thousands of these objects have now been confirmed. But unlike previous assumptions that many systems will have something similar to the solar system, instead here we discovered a lot of bizarre extremes. For example, super hot planets where it seems to rain glass sideways, planets that resemble Jupiter, but whose temperature seems to be even hotter than most of the stars in the galaxy, planets with very bizarre unexplained atmospheres, or planets orbiting stars super close, but also planets that potentially resemble Earth 2.0, all of which we've discussed in some of the previous videos in the description. With the sheer volume of these discoveries suggesting that planetary formation is incredibly robust, seems to happen pretty much in all conditions, and seems to result in completely different planets that even today are kind of difficult to imagine. But this robustness faces its ultimate test. What happens when these planets try to form in systems with more than one star? So for example, in binary, triple or quadruple systems, or even multiple star systems, that we know exist all over the place. And so even though currently all our experience about planets comes from a single star system with a single star, that is, our Sun, Many stars out there exist as multiple star systems, with binaries being more common than single stars. And technically a lot of these stars, as they orbit each other, present a relatively hostile environment for forming any planets. Mostly because of very powerful dynamic gravity conditions that in theory should rip apart any disk, preventing planets from forming. Except for in some cases, as you can see in this image, where they can actually form what's known as the circumbinary disk, slightly farther away from the binary. This is actually an example of so-called Tatooine planets we've discussed previously in some of the videos in the description. And for many years now, scientists have been continuously finding more and more of these types of planets, with some of these circumbinary planets having such an extreme orbit that in many cases it was kind of difficult to explain. With this recent discovery from a system known as Toy-2267, once again challenging major planetary formation models, and actually challenging these models more than any other previous star system before it. And there's a really good reason for this. Here we actually have to briefly discuss binary star systems. And so, so far, based on all of our discoveries, usually they have one of two possible planetary configurations. Either the circumbinary planet, basically a planet orbiting both stars, like the fictional Tatooine, or a circumstellar orbit, where one of the stars has very close planets, but the other star is much farther away. But a lot of numerical simulations show that nearby companion stars, especially very close stars, in pretty much all cases severely disrupt the protoplanetary disk, the disk from which planets usually form, and thus end up completely planetless, with possibly just chunks of stuff orbiting around these stars, but no actual planets. And so here in most simulations, the disruption truncates the disk, reducing its lifespan and mass, and inducing violent migration or even ejection of planetary material, with every single case of a close stellar companion, or basically a binary system where stars orbit super close to each other, completely disrupting planetary formation and basically never having any planets. Or just to rephrase this, when we have two stars that are super close to each other, they're extremely unlikely to have planets unless those planets are much farther away and orbit in this circumbinary disk. So kind of similar to what you see right here. And this context is vital because in this new star system, these rules seem to be completely ignored. As always, you can learn about this in the study right here that you can find in the description. And so first, what system is this? Well, it's about 190 light years away from us and it contains two red dwarfs. Actually, very typical stars in our galaxy and in this case, just your typical M-type stars that we've seen many times before. These are relatively small, cool, and low-mass stars, which have previously been prime targets for trying to discover Earth-sized planets. And here it contains one M5V star and one M6V star, with the temperatures of about 3000 Kelvin and 2900 Kelvin on average. 
or just to rephrase this, when it comes to any kind of a star in a galaxy, this is your typical super average star. Middle of the road, red dwarf. But the system is a little bit bizarre, because here the stars orbit each other super close. This is a compact binary configuration, with the distance between stars being only 8 astronomical units. Very similar to the distance from the Sun to Saturn. And so because of this tight orbital configuration, this obviously creates unstable gravitational conditions. And as a matter of fact, even without any other discoveries, this is already kind of a record holder. This would be the coolest binary system in terms of temperature, with the smallest stellar separation known to contain at least one planet. And so yeah, planets here have been discovered. And let's actually discuss how and what was found. Now, originally this was discovered by the NASA's test telescope, whose main job was to find Earth-sized planets around red dwarfs. But these observations were combined with ground-based observations from two famous telescopes. TRAPPIST, responsible for finding the most exciting star system, TRAPPIST-1, and the SPECULUS telescope, or technically the SPECULUS project, whose job is to find Earth-sized exoplanets around very cold stars by using an automated telescopic system. And so here, by using a combination of three different telescopes, researchers confirmed the discovery of at least three planets. Or actually, two were confirmed and one was still a candidate. And two of them were warm, Earth-sized exoplanets, Toy 2267b and C. With the planet B actually being exactly the same size as our own planet, one Earth radii, but in this case with a very short orbit of approximately 2.3 days. Now because this is a red dwarf, here the temperatures are not actually that super hot. And the second planet C is slightly bigger at 1.14 Earth radii and has an orbit of 3.5 days. But in addition to these two confirmed signals, TESS also revealed a potentially third object, but its orbit seems to be 2 days. And that's a little bit unusual because in this case, if this third signal is officially confirmed, and if this is a real planet, then it's not entirely clear where and how it's orbiting. So basically here we have a new crucial puzzle. By studying the dynamics of these three worlds, and by using dynamical stability models, researchers revealed that if all of these three planets orbit a single star, this would become extremely unstable very quick. Because here we have three planets in extremely close orbits to each other, and without any stable resonance that would basically completely destroy the system. And so by placing all three planets around the same star, here this would result in an extremely unstable system architecture. Specifically the two inner planets, the candidate and planet B, seem to produce instability in 95% of simulations, basically falling apart within just a few years, or colliding with one another and producing massive explosions. And this strongly implies that either the third planet does not exist, or all of these planets cannot orbit the same star. And intriguingly, there was actually one stable simulation that produced a system that kind of made sense. And this would involve a unique configuration you see in this image. Two planets orbit one star, the remaining planet orbits the second star with the best evidence pointing at planets B and C orbiting the same star, very likely the bigger Toy 2267a, and actually orbiting with a resonance of 3 to 2, suggesting that they can actually be very stable long term, with the third planet orbiting around the second star. But this really makes no sense when it comes to planetary formation and all of the models we have in regards to planetary disks and in regards to resonance. Since these two planets have 3 to 2 mean motion resonance, it actually suggests a kind of a timing relationship that must have formed as these planets migrated through what's known as convergent migration. Or essentially in the original protoplanetary disk, they must have moved closer and closer until they reached a kind of a stabilization mechanism, eventually remaining locked to these two orbits. And this would imply a large protoplanetary disk, with these two planets forming farther away and eventually migrating inwards. But the thing is, that second star, the one that's orbiting really close to the first star, in theory should not allow for such disks to form, and in theory should have dislodged both of these planets a long time ago. Moreover, for that second star to have its own planet, it also must have had a disk, which also must have been large enough to form the planet, potentially similar in size to planet Earth. And so based on what we see in the system, both of these stars seem to have their own disks, which somehow managed to survive to form their own planets. But all of the classical models of planetary formation suggest that stability would be compromised under these conditions. So basically right now nobody knows where these planets came from, 
how they formed, and how exactly this particular star system evolved to look this way. And so when it comes to planetary formation, right now this is one of the biggest mysteries. But also a kind of a perfect opportunity or a natural laboratory for studying formation of planets in compact binaries. But I guess it also highlights how limited our models currently are and how little we know about star formation and planetary formation. Which means that first future studies must confirm the existence of these three planets probably by using telescopes like the James Webb, which by the way might also provide us with a lot more data about what kind of planets these are, and tell us more about their composition, their environmental conditions, and if that Earth-sized planet is maybe as exciting as it seems. But right now, as it stands, this is a super exciting discovery for planetary scientists, and offers us a very unique binary system we've never seen before. The system that's opening new frontiers in the study of planetary architectures, and a system that officially confirms that planets seem to be way more versatile and resilient, and potentially form in ways we never imagined, even in some of the most chaotic systems out there. And so we'll definitely come back and discuss the system one more time, because I'm kind of curious what scientists are going to discover here next. Until future discoveries, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. You can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.